Hello, craftiness. Seth Apter here. I am live for one fun demo. I am hoping that you are all in the mood to create and will get your supplies and craft along with me. Hey, Michelle. So good to see you here. And Lisa Ann. All right, now I'm all set. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, so it's almost the weekend. Kind of feels like the weekend already. So I know it's gonna be a good one for everybody. Hey, Deborah. Um, hey, Amy. I'm excited too. Hey, Puff. Good to see you. Um, I wanna first, hey, Michelle. Uh, happy to be here. I want to thank Ang Herod for inviting me and allowing me to take over her Facebook page. Craftiness is a um, independent bricks and mortar and online craft and art store in California. Hey, Lisa Ann. Hey, Kendall. Hey, Wendy. Welcome, everybody. And um, Ang Herod and I, I don't know, we've known each other for quite a long time. I have no clue memory-wise how we met or when we first crossed paths. Um, it's rare that I remember that, but um, she is an amazing person and a great um, great like store owner and, and, and so passionate about arts and crafts, so I'm really happy to support her. Hey, Renee, happy to see you as well. I've been doing a lot of these Facebook Lives lately for independent craft stores because I do feel like we need to make sure we can do what we can to keep them in business. That's just so important to me. They've been so supportive of me and my career. I wanna be supportive of them in return. So, hey Gina, hey Amy. So um, let's make today about, as I've been saying, if you've been watching these, about a bunch of things. Uh, you took a class from me, okay. Back in the day. Um, so let's make this about having fun, learning some new techniques, maybe learning about some new products, and supporting craftiness. And you can support craftiness in a bunch of different ways. First of all, if you happen to be um, in California, close enough, um, you can visit the store. I believe that they're open certain hours. Is that true, Ang Herod? Please tell me if I'm spreading rumors. Hey Kelly, hey Jill, hey Rhonda. Um, you can order from them online, both during this episode of Art Demo or anytime, and you can follow them. So, you know, if you haven't yet followed their Facebook page or their Instagram page, please do so. And I'm going to encourage Ang Herod to put some links up throughout this, both to maybe her sites, her Facebook page, her online shop, specific products that I'm talking about. So if you happen to be uh, a person who say has a, a bunch of different colors of one of my products and I use it today and you find or discover another one that you know you need to have, don't go back just for today to the store that you usually get it from, order it from Ang Herod. I'd love for her to feel supported by the end of this. Hey Lois, um, 12 to five, Tuesday through Saturday, great. And there's the links. Hey Loey, lunch art and community doesn't get better than that. Hey, Laureen, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here today. Um, we're gonna get to it pretty quickly, but I am gonna give uh, a five minute window for people to sign on. So we got another couple minutes here just to wander around and say hello. I always say, if you wanna share where you're from, it's always fun to see that we usually get some people that are local to the shop and then some people who might be all over the world. And it's kind of fun to know that we're a global community. So like Laura says, Alberta, Canada, nice. Um, okay, so craftiness is also open by appointment. Five minutes away she lives, so that's, that's not a bad trip. Um, maybe, you know, you might not wanna make an appointment at 4 a.m., but other times goes. Deborah's local, love it. So tell me local. So for those of you, um, Ang Herod, share with us where you're located. Um, so for those of, uh, people who might be new to craftiness, they now know. Kelly's across the pond from me in a very chilly Sussex. Um, oh, Naomi's been there. She loves shopping at craftiness. I love that. So I'm going to assume you're pretty local. Um, Western Mass. We got East Coast. We got West Coast. We got the UK. We got Canada. Chatsworth, the LA area. Now, let me tell you, LA area, 
kind of like the NYC area, you would think there were there would be a million and one craft stores, and there aren't. So craftiness is one of the only games in town. So if you ever go to LA, if you ever travel again, um, make sure you look you look them up. Southern New Jersey, in the Valley, got it. Uh, Sherman Oaks, nice. Jill can walk there, I love that. Um, Gloria, hey Gloria from Williston, Florida. Lowest sunny, 83 degrees and getting hotter. Oh, we got 50 mile an hour winds in New York City. That's fun, right? Hey Janet, uh, thank you so much. I agree with everything you just said about Inherit. Um, I know, right? Sad there's no craft stores. So, seriously, that's in part behind what I'm doing now. Um, thank you, Deborah. Uh, my support of these craft stores um, is in part because they're disappearing. And, you know, we were hit hard with the pandemic. Happy to say, as a result of that, so many more people were crafting that some of the shops actually did quite well if they were able to kind of pivot and get online and figure it out. But it's just, it's been a struggle for the shops. You know, Amazon takes over, the big box shops take, take over. Um, you know, it's hard to have a brick and mortar shop, period. It's, ha it's hard to have an independent brick and mortar shop, period. It's hard to have a craft store. So show them the love, show them the support, make sure we all support them. So, you know, in a year from now when I'm doing this, we don't have to say, oh my God, remember a year ago there were so many and now there's none. Renee, all right, I love it. I love, love, love Ang Herod and craftiness. I'm super happy that you were doing this. Sure. Um, hey, Jill, Beverly from Quebec, nice. Uh, Canoga Park, frequent flyer of craftiness. I love it. Hey, Carol. Ang Herod is the best teacher with the best store in town. I love all these. I hope you're writing these down, Ang Herod, and gonna put them on your website. Um, hey, Claudia. They are hard to find. The, I guess the positive thing is that if you are willing to do things by mail, you can reach out to some of the shops. Um, depending upon where you live, though, I know sometimes they're, they're not close by. Sandy, Oregon. Oh, I love that. Um, I've been to Sandy. All right, so I think it's time. Yeah, it's time. It's time to get going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the phone and we're going to get to creating. We're going to kind of play today. If uh, if you don't know me, let me, quick intro. If you don't know me, my name is Seth. Seth After. I'm a New York City mixed media artist and I do lots of things. Today I'm focusing on a demo using a lot of my products from a number of different companies. Um, I don't know if everything that I'm going to use today is being sold, but a lot of it is. So Inherit is going to, I hope, link, and Kendall too, going to link to the uh, location in their online shop for what I'm doing. Hey Thalia, welcome from uh, WA, Washington State. Um, WA could also be Western Australia, so I'm glad you added the word state. Uh, so we're gonna make layers today. We're gonna work with texture, we're gonna work with colors, we're gonna work with metallic stuff. You guys can play along if you do not happen to have what I'm using, just use anything. You know, uh, making art and making craft, it's all about being creative. Go left instead of right, do what you want. Um, I will talk you through what I'm gonna do and I always tell people when I make my own art, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just start and I go from there. So the truth be told is that I have no clue what I'm gonna do today. I do know that I'm gonna start with some texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna go in one of two directions wherever the mood strikes me. Um, all right, let's go. I love how many people here are singing the praise that is just amazing. All right, bear with me, folks. All right, let's see if this will work. Me thinks it will. Now I gotta just find my space so that I know that I am actually gonna create where you can see it, which I think would be helpful. And I got it, so I'm happy about that. All right, so we're gonna start with um, texture. Uh, so if you don't know about my products or my product lines, I um, work with um, many companies, one of which is 
Aladine, which is a French company. And I just put out the last few months um, four texture pastes. So this is what they look like. We're gonna use three of them today. But I just wanna show you to give you an idea in case this is new to you. Oh, Lorene, you were in that workshop? Awesome. Um, all right, so um, these are the four texture pastes. Basically, um, if you look at the white side, that is the texture paste before it's been colored, just spread on. And this is the same paste uh, painted over or pasted over. So we have beads, sandy, crackled, and flaky. They each give a different effect. I'm just gonna hold it a little bit closer. We got beads, we got sandy, crackled, and flaky. Um, I like playing with these. For a demo, uh, unless you're, you're prepared way in advance and you have everything made in advance and dried, it's a little harder to work with these because they do take some time to dry, so you gotta bear with me today. We're definitely gonna be using a heat tool. And I'm gonna be putting these on quite thin today because it takes a longer time for them to dry when they're thick. We're gonna use three. We're gonna use beads, we're gonna use flaky, and we're gonna use sandy. Now, I believe Inherit has these in the shop, and if she does, maybe she can put a link in. And if you fall in love with them, get them. All right, so they are, first of all, just to tell you a little bit about them, they are, they're white and opaque. Um, um, Sandy and Flaky sounds like the names of the seven dwarves. It's also uh, some of my nicknames on, on good and not so good days. Um, they're opaque, they're white. So you can either go in with color and mix it before you add it, or you can work over it. I think today we're going to start by working over it. Um, they are all surface. It says it in English and it says it in French. So what that means is that they work on paper, on fiber, on, on um, glass, on metal, on plastic, on wood, on canvas, on everything, which is great. Um, and we're going to use them my favorite way, which is just a big old mixed mess. Um, so I'm going to get a palette knife. Um, if you're playing along, you can either, and you don't have these, you can either find any kind of texture um, supply that you have, um, or you can just skip this step and then start with the next step, which will be painting and working over it. Um, all right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, I'm going to start with flaky. And um, uh, all the three releases that I, I released this year with Aladdin, they're all all surface, which is really important to me because I like working on wood and metal. And um, Oh, thank you, Renee. I meant to talk about that before I spread this on. All right, so originally what I did was I cut up some black cardstock. I like working on black a lot. Um, ooh, a moon, cool. Rhonda, I like working on black a lot. I love the impact that you have when you have a little bit of black background showing through. So what I did originally was I cut some black cardstock. If you don't have any formal black um, cardstock or watercolor paper, you can always start with white and layer it with black paint or black gesso. But what I decided for me, and if you have this great, if you don't just work on cardstock or any other surface, because we know they all work, I used a, I'm using a piece of book board. And book board is just basically board that you can buy that it's the material that book covers are made from like hardcover books and i use it a lot because i make books um but i also like it because we all know hey jill that when you add anything wet to anything fibrous like paper it curls and you know that that doesn't really bother me it's going to uncurl that's fine but i thought for the purposes of a demo let me avoid the curls it's just easier for me um so i'm working on the board you can, use, you can work on cardboard, and again, if you want to paint it black, go for it. If not, it doesn't have to be black. Thanks, Renee, for asking that. So I'm going with flaky. And basically what I do is I just squeeze a little bit out onto my palette knife. And I'm going to start with pretty little 
because again, I need to keep this pretty thin so I can dry it. And I'm just gonna begin to spread it out. I need more than that. And I'm using a palette knife, so it's just gonna spread really willy-nilly. That is a word, right? Oh, there's probably some person in the world whose last name is Nilly, and some parent who decided to call him Willie. All right, so I'm not gonna put too much because I'm not only going with flaky, um, but I'm gonna go with the other two. Now, a couple little hints and tips. Um, it's really beneficial to take a baby wipe or a cloth and just wipe off the nozzle before you recap it. Because if you don't, this is a paste, and if it dries, it is sometimes hard to get the cap off. And you may even need a pliers. And then if you want, you certainly don't have to, because we're mixing here, you can just you know clean off your palette knife. I'm not gonna do that in general, but I just wanted to mention that to you. Otherwise, the paste, if it's the last thing you're gonna do, is gonna get stuck on your palette knife. All right, so now we're gonna go, oh, so this is flaky, just so you can kind of see. Um, if I put it on thicker, you'd have a lot more kind of loose flakes that would not go anywhere. Thanks, Christy. Now let's add some um, sandy. Sandy is probably the most subtle of the textures. It is um, has fine grain sands sand in it, um, and so it's um, it's it's it adds a really beautiful surface. But you can actually see you can just see as it comes out. It's quite a different feel to the flaky. Now I hope, since lots of people aren't commenting, my hope is always that that means they're not commenting because they are working. They are just, well, either eating lunch, right, Loey? Or they're, you know, spreading some texture on whatever they're working on. You'll notice, I do this often, I kind of start spreading in the middle, and I kind of don't work on the edges. And I, I want the edges covered as well, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add some and make sure I get the edges covered. Now you can see there's some black spots there. Um, I'm so glad about that. That's part of the reason why I like the black. I want the black to show through, so I am not gonna cover it completely. Uh, mixed media, hint, it's all about layers and it's all about making sure that any one layer does not cover every layer underneath. The beads, oh, thanks, Joanne. Appreciate that. Hey, KL, hey, Paul, good to see you. Uh, so if you're just joining me, we're working on black car, um, book board, but you can be working on black cardstock or any surface because these are all surfaces. And this one, and we're putting three different textures. We're mixing them. This one is beads. I'm putting them on purposely thin because if they're too thick, they're just not going to dry in time um, for this demo. And one of the things about drying, I'm going to dry with a heat tool, but remember, when you have a thick coating of texture, um, and you dry it with a heat tool, the surface of it will be dry. But what's inside, if it's thick, is not dry at all. So if you put any pressure on it, say with a palette knife or with a, um, a paintbrush, if you pounce over it, you are gonna find that you are gonna break in to uh, the surface and you're gonna start hitting the, the gooey texture paste that's inside. And, um, that's not what I want. So I'm going really thin. We'll still get the great effect, but just know that if I were doing this on my own and not worried about time at all, I would be putting this on much, much thicker. All right, now, I think the last thing I'm gonna do, because now the flaky is underneath, I'm just gonna add a touch more flaky. I really love the effect of the flaky. Let's see, am I off center here? Yes, I am. Okay. So I am gonna add a little bit more flaky to the top. The scraping, yeah. I am so in love with paint, pro uh, paint products, craft products that make a noise. You know, it's, it's kind of the full experience. Now, I have some scratches in there um, from the palette knife. I wasn't necessarily looking for scratches. They just sort of happened. Um, and I'm good with that. But you can go in if you want and add 
lots of scratches. And those of you who've watched me before know that sometimes I can spend three hours in a demo just making these kind of scratch marks. Um, I'm more happy today that they're, just, they're sort of happening by accident. All right, I think I'm good. A reminder, just wipe off that cap, because I promise you if you don't, and you have a lot of paste there, when you cap it, the next time you go, you're gonna get frustrated. And then remember, Seth told you. All right, I'm gonna clean off my palette knife. The only time I clean my supplies, like palette knives or stencils or things like that, is when I use um, pastes because they will potentially um, never move again. How are we doing with this? Okay. There we go. Hey, Janet. All right, so now I'm gonna put these aside and I'm gonna hit the heat tool. This would be the time if you are um, working on your own, dry it with the heat tool. If you are not working on your own, this is the time maybe to click over and get a few of these. Actually, yeah, I'll show it to you after it's dried. So this, I am gonna take my time with this. Like, I'm not gonna take 25 minutes, but I'm not gonna just do it for 30 seconds. I really want this to be dry. You probably can hear me as I'm doing this. I'm using a heat tool that has two settings, and I have it on high, which probably does mean that I'm fighting it. Um, thanks, Inherit, but I'm a pretty good talker, so I think I can do that. So, as I said earlier, and I want to just remind you of all this, um, oh, you guys argue about washing stencils? Which one of you wants to wash them and which one of you doesn't? Yeah, this could be like true confessions during the heat tool portion. But what I was going to say was that you can mix these with any color of pretty much anything before you actually spread them on. So what I usually do is I just squeeze a little bit out on my craft mat. You do not. I'm high five to that. Um, and you mix it. You can mix it with wet pigment, like all my products, my dye sprays, my pigment inks. Uh, you can mix it with paint. You can mix it with anything wet like that. You can also mix it with anything dry. So you can mix it with any like dry pigment, uh, flaky things like mica flake. Um, you can mix it with anything. Um, you got the heat tool on the carpet? Oh! Wow. That must have been a frenzy of crafting. But yeah, you gotta be careful with these heat tools. Oh, it's so funny. Some of us are washers and cleaners and some of us aren't. We knew what you meant, Paul. Um, all right, so I'm gonna touch this and it's definitely still sticky. So remember, I told you this is gonna take a bit, but I wanna get this prepared for what we're gonna do next. The fourth texture paste that Team Clean versus Team Dirty. I think we have a reality TV show in the making. Uh, the fourth texture paste that I did not use is Crackle. It is definitely one of my favorite. It does take time for the crackle to appear. So, you know, you're gonna need to wait till it's fully dry to get the crackle effect. If you put it on thinly, you get very thin crackles, almost like crazing, like old china. And sometimes if it's very thin, you might not get any. When the thicker you put it on, the bigger the crackles. And the wonderful thing about that is you can really get textural effects. Um, but you do need to prepare yourself and let that fully dry. I will tell you that you can mix the crackle paste with something before you put it on. And you can dry the crackle paste with a heat tool. But like all crackle paste, hey Shayna, when you do either of those things, it sometimes stops the crackle from being as significant. So just be aware that if you're going to shortcut it like that, you might get less crackle. So if you're planning on really wanting to go with a crackle, plan on maybe working over morning to night or one day to the next. Hey, Terry. The crackle paste that actually crackles is kind of important, right? This is still kind of sticky, my friends. So let's just go maybe another two or three minutes. And hopefully this is giving you time to either do this for yourself or maybe run and get a snack 
I am using a six by six inch board. And you can see with the heat tool being added to this, even my board is warping a bit. Green recovering perfectionist. Yeah, I get it. I do get it. You know, some people are just comfortable with sort of letting go and making a mess, and some people definitely like things a little bit more ordered and organized. Um, and as long as you're okay with who you are in that realm, then that is awesome. It makes the world go round. All right, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go just another minute or two, and I apologize for taking this much time because you all know how to use a heat tool. So it's not like I'm demoing something new and exciting. But I really don't want to shortchange this and make a big gloppy mess of this. I mean, sometimes I love big gloppy messes, but that's not my goal. Well, that might be my goal, but um, I want to at least start with what it's supposed to look like when all the texture paste is dry. All right, so it's tacky to the touch. Except for the thicker parts, it's pretty dry. Like watching paint dry, exactly. No, if you good one, Lowe. All right, so I am going to stop. Um, that's probably the longest I've used a heat tool maybe ever. I'm very impatient when it comes to making art. Now, I don't know what you guys do, but when I have my curls, I just try to do a little bit of playing to uncurl it. So I am going to kind of gently take this. Yeah, you can see it's still wet. Uh, to take this and... Um, kind of flatten it a little bit. And what I really do want you to notice is, remember I said earlier that it could be dry to the surface, but maybe not dry inside? So you can see right there, um, there's sort of a bursted, thicker area. You know what? I'm okay with that. I don't want the whole thing like that, but I'm okay with that. That might end up being my favorite spot. All right, there we go. All right, so hopefully you guys are kind of caught up or caught up. Now, at this point, you can do so much with this. You can go over it with anything. You can go over it with um, paint, with, with sprays, with other textures. Um, uh, I have so many products. I have pearly, I have ice. I'm gonna just use a whole bunch. And you know, I have been debating while I set up for this, whether to go like bright and colorful or whether to go kind of grungy and metallic. And I think I'm gonna end up going grungy and metallic and a little dark and a little dirty. So hopefully you can hang with me on that. You do not have to choose the colors I choose or the color direction. So I just wanna let you know in advance, that's my goal to make this sort of grungy, metallic, rusty, textural. If you wanna go bright or, or, or shabby chic, um, uh, 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 glossy and, and, and glittery, by all means do that. Just choose different colors that I'm gonna do. You were warned. All right, so I am gonna start with um, uh, some, what am I gonna start with? I'm gonna start with some um, paint, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just start with a little bit of paint. So I am gonna go to my paper artsy paints. And I'm remembering that I'm planning on going kind of grungy, but um, I don't have to use um, like metallic colors just because I want to end up with metallic. Um, oh, Lois, I missed that. Thank you for answering that. No, everything, the, the, all these come just plain white and you have to do the mixing. Thank you for um, everybody answering that. So I'm gonna use a bunch of my colors. Um, I'm gonna use Mud Splat. Um, I might use a little bit of Midnight. Um, might use a little bit of Terracotta. Um, oh, uh, Mahogany. These are the one, um, Steel Gray and Terracotta. These are the ones I'm thinking about. But honestly, after I use one or two of them, I may change my mind because it may not be going in the direction that I want it to go in. 
and that's always what I'm about. I just let the layer tell me where to go next. I'm choosing these colors because I think, you know, that they would be nice bases for like um, a crusty, rusty piece. I got kind of steel gray and midnight because they sort of have a metalish feel. I got terracotta because it's, um, I think it would look beautiful with a rust. Mud splat is, is sort of a taupey, uh, grayish, purplish color that I think would also go well with metals. And mahogany again, because I think this is, has a little bit of a rusty tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use a paintbrush, my favorite kind of paintbrushes, which are these cheap bristle brushes. And I use these for so many different reasons. Today I'm using them because I'm gonna destroy them. And I don't wanna take a $50 brush and destroy it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of, I'll start with steel gray, and I'm going to put, put that on my palette. Um, and then I'm gonna take maybe a little bit of mud splat. I'm gonna take three of them put it on my palette. I'm really not putting too much out. And then I'm going to take some Midnight. So these are sort of my, in my mind, a little bit like metallic-y colors. I mean, they're not really, but I'm an artist, so I can, I can, you know, go my own way. And I'm going to do this dry. You can do it wet, but I'm going to do it dry. And I'm just going to pounce in and kind of pounce off. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to begin to pounce on. Um, and I'm just going to do it very, we're back to the willy-nilly, I'm just going to do it very um, haphazardly. Just going to add some color. And what I really want you to notice is, see what I mean when I say I destroy my brush? See what I mean when I say don't use your $50 brush to do that? I am so good that I'm sort of blending all the different colors. Um, I don't want it to be even. I kind of just want it to have sort of a cool steely tone, knowing that it's really not going to look like steel at all, at least not yet. Um, and I'm good with all the blending. The lighter blue, uh, well the color I'm using here, I'm using steel gray, mud splat, and midnight. And I do believe in here it has these in her shop. I love the steel gray, it's actually one of my favorite colors. It, it has a little bit of a blue tone, a blue undertone to it. So it's not like a, a very like uh, icy cold gray. I wouldn't quite call it a warm color, but it has enough uh, blue tone in it that it it's not your average typical gray. I love using the midnight blue as well, almost instead of black, although believe you me, I am a big fan of black paint and black gesso. All right, so you can just see the disaster that my brush is. And I would probably stop now, but I just feel like I might as well just use up the paint instead of wasting it. Yeah. All right, I love this. This could definitely, like I could turn this into maybe a paintbrush person with a really cool troll kind of hair. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that that will happen, but it would be fun. All right, so this is what I got now. I want you kind of to be able to see the texture in there. Um, what happens when you begin to add color is the texture does come out. Um, you can see the scratches. You can still see the areas where the black is coming through. Um, I'm really happy with it already. Good brush has gone bad. I actually think that might be a class from Michael Demang. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna go in with these tones. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to add, but I do want to add a little bit of warm tones. And I always tell people, um, thanks Wendy, and yes, I, I totally love how the colors just completely show you the textures that you have there. Um, I always tell people that when you're working in mixed media and working with layers, you do not have to worry about your lower layers. It's only going to be a little bit that's going to show through, so don't stress at all the beginning. I mean, I don't want you to stress at all, period. Um, let's just close this up a bit. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of this. And you know what? If it looks great, fantastic. If it looks like mud, fantastic. It doesn't matter. Little bits, little hints of it 
are gonna show through. And I love when you have glints of one color. Thanks, Jill. That may be not the primary color. Well, that's not, I shouldn't use the word primary. That may be not the predominant color that you're using, but you have a little bit of that color popping through. I really like this one. This one's a mahogany. I love this one. It's, it's like a very rust, rustic, reddish, brickish brown. Fresh people, yep. Um, and I, 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 I do love how it looks with these other colors. Um, so I, I do want to add more of it in there. And every time you add more color like this, you're just creating more depth. Let's just put a little bit more of this in. Um, to add a little bit more of that lightness. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes this gets so spread out like that, you almost end up not even adding paint. So I'm going to give a little crunchiness and pull it back together a little bit. I, I kind of gave it a new haircut. All right, so this is what I got now. Um, now, one of the things I often talk about when I work in layers is um, using contrast. So uh, I go from dark to light or light to dark often. So to me, when I look at this, actually, I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to ask you, do you see this as light or dark right now? And there's no both. That's not a proper answer or in the middle or some sections are light, some are dark. Overall, the piece, chimney sweeps brush. Wow, that's cool. Um, do you see it as light or dark? And I am going to wait to get a bunch of answers before I move on. Light, okay. We got one light. I'm not going to total it up. Light, dark. This always happens. Nobody agrees unless you're doing white or black. We got two lights, two darks. So this is perfect. It's half and half. Three lights, um, four lights, two darks. I guess I am counting. Three darks. I want to give everybody a chance. Oh, we're tied at four to four. Love it. Okay, dark's coming along. Um, all right, so I know there's more coming. Um, there's always that delay. So it's actually split pretty evenly. I personally see it as dark. I know there's a lot of the light undertones from the paste that hasn't been covered yet, but I actually, when I look at this, I kind of see it as dark. It does not matter. It's not right or wrong. It's whatever your eye sees. Whatever your eye sees, you're going to do the opposite for the next layer. So if you're working on yours and you see it as dark, choose a lighter color to go. If you're, um, Bev says balanced. Um, if you see it as dark, use a lighter color. If you see it as light, use a darker color. Um, and I am going, I see it as dark. I'm going to go in with my glacier ice which is, an, it's really icy, um, hence it's called Glacier Ice, but I think it's gonna really be nice on this. I'm not gonna put much. I'm just gonna put a little bit to brighten this up or lighten it up in some spots. Yeah, there we go, we get that contrast. Now, probably if I thought this was light, I would probably have used maybe black or a midnight blue. And I'm not going overboard with this. I'm just trying to add a little bit of contrast to what's underneath. Now, as I see this, now this definitely already to me looks lighter. Not much of a change, um, but to me it's lighter. All right. Is this brush even worth putting in here? Yeah, it might come back to life semi. And again, because I use these brushes, they're meant to be used really rough. It's okay if it ends up looking kind of wonky in the end. All right, we are gonna move away from paint. Because remember, I said I'm gonna end up here with something sort of metallic um, and grungy and sort of rusty. And we're not there yet, my friends. But let's just see um, what we might be able to add uh, to kind of get there a little bit. Um, the first thing I'm thinking about is I want to add a little bit of spray, some dye spray. Because what I really want you to see here is that um, the surface of the texture will take a color sometimes better than what's underneath. So you still see some of that black, which I'm okay with, I actually really like. But when you use something wet, 
it seeps in and I do want to I want some seeping I want some seeping in I am going to keep a baby wipe or a, a, a towel or a cloth handy because I may want to wipe off the surface after it seeps in and that um, is more obvious when you have very thick texture paste remember I put mine on thinly um, now I could also just use paint rather than a spray and and wet it you know with a um, let's see if I have a uh, bowl um, with a um, mister so I'm going to keep that around. But I'm going to start with some um, dye sprays here. And I think I'm going to go, I'm going sort of grungy. Um, I'm going sort of a mix between metal and grunge, which sounds like I'm talking about 80s rock or 80s music. So I'm just grabbing a bunch of colors that I think might work. So I am using my dye sprays. My dye sprays are, um, I believe, also in the shop. I'm just using a bristle brush. You can get it sometimes at a craft store. You can get it at a hardware store. It's often meant like for glue. Um, I almost, I would say 80% of the time, this is what I paint with. I like the fact that the bristles don't hold together. Your, your brush strokes are irregular. Um, and I always 90% paint dry as well. All right, so I got a whole bunch of these that I think might work. I'm going with sort of um, colors that are a little bit metallic, like I got um, my copper buff and I got my gold mine, but I'm also going with these sort of um, uh, dark, grungy, um, almost vintagey colors a little bit. And I'm just gonna spray. I don't know what's gonna look like. Let's just have some fun. Um, these, by the way, um, and Herod can link to, if you don't know about these, there are 18 colors in the line. They're fast drying, and for me, the most um, important aspect about this line that I release is that they're no clog. Now, I will tell you that every once in a while, someone has a clog, but it's rare, very rare. I would actually, actually, for those of you who've used this before, you know, I'm going to just go on a limb and take a risk. How many people have had clogs? Um, please tell me. Um, now, the sprays are uh, dye sprays, so they're dye ink, so they have some translucency to them, although the um, metallics are a little bit more opaque, and they are um, also um, meant for absorbent surfaces. Um, so these don't work on, say, glass or metal or anything like that. So I'm going to add just a little bit of black. I'm just going to spritz. So far, we've got no clogs. Thank you, guys, and I promise I didn't pay anyone to say that. I'm just going to spritz a little bit of each color. I like the mix. Um, all right. And I'm going, starting with, now this is going to shift it dramatically. I'm, I'm going in with T now. So while I am having this sort of, sort of almost black moment here, it, it almost appears mostly black and white, I'm actually going to now, yeah, there we go add some of these um, color, sort of rusty color. I had one that is a bit cloggy, but someone told me how to fix it. Okay, I'll take one that's a bit cloggy. It's not bad. Um, this is honey. Remember, these are opaque. Uh, these are, relatively speaking, translucent, as are all dye sprays. So because of that, they're not going to dramatically change the coloration um, because I'm starting with a dark background. So that's just something to be aware of. Also know that because they are uh, not permanent, um, everything else I'm using today is permanent. These are not permanent. Hey, Rita. Um, when I add something wet over this, it's going to move it. It's going to leach these colors up. That may look great or it may not. We're going to find out. Um, how about a little um, co uh, coffee? Coffee. Um, now, know that this is kind of how I work. I, I like to add lots of different, ooh, that really showed up the beads. I gotta show you that. I really showed up some of the texture there because the beads that are on the surface there, I hope you can see this, um, you know, the wetness soaked down. Can we see that? It's a little, no, I see it's, a, it's way too, um, 
I'm holding it too close. Well, you can kind of see the beads rolling on the surface. I think you can. All right, take my word for it if you can. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna add some shine, and we're gonna go with um, the copper buff and the gold mine, which is what I'm really gonna go with. Um, now, what I want to mention about these is is these are every other spray except for the metallics is matte. These are shiny and loaded with mica. Um, mine don't clog or rarely clog but the best way when you have these dye sprays or anybody's sprays is don't shake them up and down because then what happens is the mica gets caught in the tube you want to either rock it like this thanks Ann or you want to roll it like this then you mix and it's not going up the two. Now you really do have to mix these well. Um, hey Jim, good to see you. Um, because if you don't mix them well, you're really gonna get like a watered down version. So let's see what happens if I mixed it well enough. And this copper, by the way, this is gonna really blend with the colors that I have here. It really is. Yeah, it's lightening it up. It's bringing out some of the texture. Ooh, I love what that did. I hope you guys can see that. Um, what are the different textures I used? I used sandy. Beads. Um, oh, these are the French versions. Sorry, I have I have a rare uh, French version. So I have flaky, sorry, flaky, beads, and sandy were the three I used. All right, so now let's just take a second. And can you see that? Mmm, I love that. I love how that's brought out the texture in such a better way. Um, and I love now that it has this shine. It's still obviously quite wet. Um, love that. Ooh, it's just looking good to me. It's looking better and better and better. Let's add some gold. This is, I will tell you, the gold mine um, is the best seller of the my eyes ink dye sprays. Um, it is definitely the most popular. Um, and I think um, I've seen a lot of people use it online. Sorry if I'm getting you dizzy. Um, and I can see why based on the amazingness that a lot of you guys out there have created. Pull a print while it's wet. Judy wants me to pull a print. Let's see, I have, I have printer paper. All right, so I got that, which is pretty cool. I could turn that into a rubber stamp. Um, yeah, that's good. And it still looks good here. All right, so I'm shaking up, shaking up, shaking up. Because this gold especially, you need to you need to get all the beauty of the gold. And remember now, as I add the gold, this is going to change it pretty significantly. In my mind, it is anyway. Mmm. Got a brush in there, a bristle, which I kind of actually like. So I'm just gonna leave it there and hope it gets encased. I see depth. Depth is good, yeah, there we go. So now this is just adding some brightness to it. Mm -mm -mm. This is good. I am really loving this. Um, and now that I have the shiny sprays, you know, the eyes and dye sprays and metallics, it's also gonna bring a hint of sheen to this piece. Now I want to go back and just remind everybody that we started with a layer of these three colors. And remember what I said in the very beginning. Um, I know, bristles, I go back and forth with that. New York grunge. I started with these three colors and I said to everybody, don't worry about your first layers. You're barely, if at all, going to see them. And am I right? I'm, I'm right, right? 
you can barely tell these colors are in there, maybe in some edges and some corners. Um, that's why mixed media is so much fun and so much freedom because you don't have to worry about it. Um, now, I'm with Ang Herod on this. For whatever reason, this bristle is bothering me today. So I am going to take it out. All right. Ang Herod, you and me both. All right, so what are we going to do now? I'm going to take the heat tool and I'm going to dry. So now we go to that portion of our programming. And what I really want you to notice is the texture. The amazing texture that has been created. And that as you add more and more coloration to the surface, the texture just comes out more and more. And there's those scratches too. And I think you probably noticed, I hope you noticed, that when I added the real wet dye sprays, that's when a lot of the texture really came to the forefront. And that's because the wet dye sprays seep in and left the surface of some of that texture um, a little painty from the colors that were underneath. And as a result of that, the texture shows up even more. a little wet and I'm gonna try something cat here I don't have a cat but yeah I would probably feel the same way about that um, you can see some of the scratches um, perhaps uh, there we are some of the scratches that I had made um, on purpose and then there was some that I made just because the palette knife kind of scratched um, Okay, so I see this. I actually feel like I need a little bit of black. Um, a satellite photo, cool. I just feel like it needs a, a little spritz of black. So I'm just gonna, from pretty far away, it does have that purple tone and that, I think in part, is from some of the colorations that I used underneath. And then some of the colors that I used above that, that, had, a, that had a purple hue. I just feel like it needs a little bit of I'm really holding it far away because I don't want to add too much. Just felt like it needed a little dirt. Um, a mini pizza oven to slide your board in. I love it. Next release. All right, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to try something here. Um, I am going to try a little bit of embossing powder. Now, I dried my surface, but my surface is still a little bit wet. And the amazing thing about um, embossing powder is that you don't necessarily need to have a pad. Um, thanks, Cal. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a pad if, as long as you have some sort of wet-ish surface. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna drizzle with my finger a couple different, a whole bunch of different um, embossing powders. Um, and this is usually how I work. You so saw I, I put in, I think, four or five or six sprays, four or five, six paint colors. To me, you get a much more natural surface when you don't just use a few. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna try a bunch of different things. I am gonna use some of my old embossing powders and my new. So I believe in here it sells my baked texture from Emerald Creek. I don't think she has my wow. I'm gonna use a little bit of my Rocky Road um, which is black, but it also has a lot of um, clear crystals and it has some shiny silver. So we're gonna get some silver glints from this. It's always important with all of my powders, no matter from what company, that you shake it up. Because if you don't shake it up well, you're gonna end up with just some of the crystals. So I'm going to see if it's gonna work. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, now it's more shooken up, and I'm gonna go with my finger and I'm just gonna drizzle it out. Um, slowly. I am not looking for one big blotch of embossing powder. That's in fact the last thing I want because 
once you do that, once you get embossing powder melted, it's near impossible to kind of work over it easily. Um, it takes a lot of effort, and the more effort and thought it takes, to me, the less organic it looks. All right, so I think you can see some of those. Maybe you can see some of those flakes. And I'm hoping that if I tip it, they, they don't all fall off. Some fell off, but not all. And now I'm gonna go into my, um, my line from uh, Wow. And I have uh, three metal ones. I have crusty copper, etched platinum, and weathered gold. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, these are not, these are not as textural as my previous releases, but they're rough and scratchy, but also shiny. Can you see the glints in there? And I wanna bring in some of that sheen because even though it's it's like dirt and rust, you know, it, when I think about rust, rust is metal, that's rust, and rust and metal is shiny to begin with. So I love the fact that this, that everything I've used so far embossing wise is gonna have some glints. And I'm going and I'm going in and I'm just sprinkling. I'm trying to do this actually patient and slowly. As I said, sometimes I'm a very impatient artist. Um, and and I also know that we're on a you know time limit, and you guys are watching, so you may or may not want to see me sprinkle powder for three hours. Um, I can't remember what I did. Did I do weathered gold already? No. Let's put some weathered gold in there as well. Um, but I'm, I'm I am trying to go slow so that I don't just add a big big old blotch, because I want this to kind of blend in with what I've done already. All right. All right, I've missed a lot of comments lately. Um, or maybe I haven't. Okay, you guys are all busy. I love that. All right. Now, um, I could tip it. Oh, it's perfect, because it was still a little wet, even after my heat tool. So tipping it, nothing's coming off. So let's just see what happens. Um... I'm gonna tip this so that I can see when it starts to melt. Thanks, Lily. Because it is gonna be hard to see when it melts. Because there's just a little bit everywhere. Um, and so on the tipping, I know it doesn't look so pretty. But it's, it's helping me because I have a light coming in from the window behind me. Yeah, I see some of the elements melting. You guys are probably too busy doing your thing anyway to, to even watch. Hey, Sandy. Look at this one. I'm gonna turn this light on. Uh, the paint was still wet. I had used a dye spray a wet dye spray and I dried it, but not fully. And so it's just stuck to that. Embossing powder can stick to anything. People emboss use water. You can use a spritz of water and, and then pour your embossing powder on. Also, if it starts flying off, just heat from underneath until it starts to melt. And then you can heat from the surface on top. Okay, now I see it. Now I see it. I hope you guys can see it. It's bubbling. Yeah. Okay. I have it on high now. Yeah. It's like a geo cool. Uh, oops, it's starting to burn a little bit. I can smell it. You want to be careful. You don't want to over burn embossing powder unless you have a mask. And now that we all have a mask, well, you probably don't want to overburn it anyway. But, you know, it's plastic. You don't want to breathe in the fumes. So, wearing one of your disposable masks or something like this. Oh my god, this is looking so good. I hope you guys can see it. I'm just having fun watching it burn and bubble. I'm almost forgetting that you're here. This is so much fun. All right, now I think I'm just um, trying to get more bang for my... Oh, there it goes. Okay. 
100% sure that it's 100% done. I'm going to turn this light out, I think. Let's see if you can get a sense of what this looks like. I want to see if it's better with or without the light. Uh, it's kind of not great with either, but I'm going to show this to you at the end um, when I lift the camera up. All right, so um, we are gonna go and we're gonna add, we're gonna shift this just a little bit, not too much. Um, I want to go in and I wanna add a little bit of patina, patina. Um, but I wanna do it kind of soft and subtly. So I think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in two different ways. And I'm gonna start with um, some more embossing powder and I'm going to go also to my wow powders um, I have a great um, a great um, embossing powder from Emerald Creek that maybe Angharig can link to um, that I do not happen to have in front of me um, it's patina oxide that would be sort of a um a little bit of a darker patina and my sea of tranquility is going to be from wow is a little bit of a lighter patina so what i'm going to do is i am going to once again sprinkle it but because this is fully dry it isn't going to stick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a two-handed thing i'm going to heat a section and when that section is hot i'm going to sprinkle and it's not because the paint it's not gonna stick to the paint, but it's going to stick to a little bit of those melting embossing powder crystals. Does that make sense? Um, so let's just see what happens here. Let's see if we can make this happen. And again, I am trying not to go overboard with this. I don't want it too patina-y. I just want this subtly patina-y. All right, so I can see it's sort of bubbling a little bit, it's getting a little hotter. So I should be able to sprinkle a little bit and get some of that to clean it in there. And that's what I'm just going to continue doing for a while. Thanks, Dan. I don't want too much. You can absolutely go heavier and heavier on this and get a much bigger sort of patina effect. But that's not my goal. Well, you know, I'm not using fur price per se, but I'm using these colors that I consider to be the green patina. And that's the same idea. It's sad the contrast, it's that a little bit of warmth. And also, it's what happens to metal over time. Not all metal, but, you know, metal. Um, yeah, I can smell the heat too. I'm a little closer. Okay. And for me, that's actually going to be enough. But seriously, you guys can go heavy on this if you like. I'm going to heat it for another moment. Come on, Nick. Right. Let's see if you guys can see that when I hold it up. Again, I'm going to gently, it's still hot, I don't want to make sure I don't touch the surface. I'm going to gently turn kind of turn this against the curve 
so it flattens. And can you see the, um, the sort of the, the patina of it all? All right, so the embossing powder link isn't working. If anybody wants it, leave it in the comment and they'll get it. Yeah, you can see it. So it's, to me, it was, it was a, the idea of a, of a subtle, of a subtle turn. If you guys, I know it's not reading true color, um, but looks good to me. Um, and then remember I said I'm gonna do this a couple ways. Maybe add a little bit of um, uh, contrast and patina. So what I am gonna do is I am gonna go in with the thing that I think was the most surprising to people this year that I put out uh, five colors of glitter paint. Um, so these are my sort of rust and patina colors. There's um, black coffee, azure blue, and golden bronze. It does look different every time I move it when the light catches it and you see different amounts of texture. Um, and then I also put on two brights, rose eggplant and beautiful blue, which is like an indigo. Uh, I believe that these are in the shop. I'm gonna turn the light off there. I am just gonna go in with a little bit of these, and this is gonna add quite a glint because they are glitter, but I don't use them like glitter. I, to me, I, they're texture pastes. I am so not a glitter person, but I love the diamond. So I'm gonna go in with my palette knife and I'm gonna go in very, very minimally. Um, I'm gonna add some black coffee because I always like to add a little darkness. Um, I just think it makes it sort of dirtier and grittier. So I'm just gonna go in and it's gonna start like sticking to some of the areas where the um, surface is raised. And it's gonna just add some darkness and some grit and a little bit of texture. And it's also gonna add a little bit of bling, crazily enough. Um, I don't want in any section to be too dramatic. You don't want this to pull your eye, so I am really kind of working it and digging, and I'm not putting much. I think you saw how little I put on, because I don't want all of a sudden you to be drawn into that one blotch like I just did there. I want this to be more of a cohesive kind of sheet of beautiful surface, beautiful dirty surface. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna lighten it up with the golden bronze and do the same thing. Just a little bit. You don't need much. Don't over squeeze these pouches. You cannot get the stuff back in. So you really wanna start with lit, lit. Put it on with an old toothbrush, that would be great too. I mean, I could put it on with my, um, you know, crazy brush as well. Um, The nice thing about this, um, the scratching got your cat's attention, I love it. The nice thing about this particular color is that it matches and blends with some of the colors underneath. And so what that's gonna do is it's going to sort of pull a lot of the layers together. Going in with the scratch. And you, I think you saw how little I used. I'm highlighting that because I always say more is more, but I always, or I want to add that it's more is more, but you, you don't, you add more and more kind of slowly. Yeah, I like that. All right, and then last but not least, I am going to add some of the Azer Blue. And that's gonna add some of the brightness. It's gonna add some contrast that I think that Rita and I think Judy agreed that the turquoise would go. I don't want too much though, my friends. I don't want too much. Um, because I don't want it to be this sort of bright, bright, bright blue. Um, sort of, it's, it's almost a turquoisey color. Um, and it's so gritty, this surface. I wish you could all feel it. What I'm doing is when I run this on, any secrets of getting the tube not to burp? What do you, when you, I'm not sure what you mean by burp. Do you mean burp like have too much come out at once? Um, if that's the question, for me, 
it's it's always about the softest of touches like even crazily it, it, it seems like it takes way too long to come out because as soon as you then get frustrated with that and press a little bit harder what ends up happening is it all pours out so that's the only it's my only suggestion over time i've learned to use these a little bit better um you know it's a different kind of packaging yeah i like that i like this i like this um Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop. I really don't want to go overboard with this. Um, now what I may do, I don't know. I don't know why I'm feeling this. I'm feeling like just to give one little spritz of gold. I don't really know that it needs it, but I'm feeling it. So I'm gonna hold it from far away and just give a little spray. Just a touch. Um, Pat it gently on the back. I love it. And here, that was funny. That's going to add a little bit of extra gold to it. Um, yeah, so the A's are blue. This is a beautiful color. Um, and it, it's, it's, it, I, I, I personally, it's one of my favorites. What made me go with this kind of packaging? Um, several things. Um, first of all, it, it is, um, the packaging itself is actually, well, I'm not going to say it's like incredibly friendly to the environment. It is more friendly to the environment um, in terms of amount than when you use a, a like a big old plastic bottle. Um, it, this is a window, so it allows you to see in it. Um, but the two reasons, and the main reasons, one is because you are able to use every drop of whatever's in the pouch. And I have my Ising Pearlies, which I didn't even talk about. Sorry, Ang Herod, and my ice. Um, every drop comes out. The other thing that I love about it is that um, as long as you cap it tight, and this is important, if you don't cap it tight, you're in trouble, it will stay usable. What happens if you um, don't cap it tight, the worst thing that happens, and several people have emailed me about this, is the plug from there to there will dry out. Um, um, but once you scoop that out, and I usually do it with um, an awl, um, then everything inside is still fresh. Um, and the QR codes will take you to videos uh, of not me, but people from um, the uh, company um, doing um, some videos showing you how to use the products. Oh, the packaging is also easy to store and it weighs less, so shipping is less. Although when you buy the whole sets, the shipping is expensive. I will tell you that. Um, yeah, I'm really loving this. So the only thing I'm feeling an urge to do is I'm feeling the urge to get out a, um, a, um, ink pad. I'm going to get out a black ink pad. I'm going to get out a, um, walnut stain ink pad. Um, and I don't know, I'm debating whether to take out my peacock feathers and I'll explain what I mean in a minute I just love to put a dark edge or frame around things so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this around the edge and kind of into the corners I hope I'm on camera for this I'm not gonna do it fully I'm not gonna go where the light makes it really hard for you to see what I'm doing um, I, I don't want a line of it I want it broken up um, so it's a little bit more realistic. That was the walnut uh, stain, Tim's Distress Inks. Probably my, one of my most favorite products that, were, that I use so often and was ever made. And now I'm gonna do it with some of the um, um, black soot. Just to get the highlights around the edges. Now, you can also use these softly to get and highlight the tips. So do you see that? That's, that's very, um, still a little wet actually. It's very gold, those tips. I don't know if you can see it because of the light. I could go in with, let's just see what happens with peacock feathers. Now remember, this is dyeing, so much like on my dye spray, it is translucent. It may not have the biggest impact, but I'm gonna just run it across 
the surface, yes, the surface of the um, texture, and it's going to catch just on the surface. Can you see that? I think you can see that, right? So I don't want to go overboard with it. It's got a sort of a different green tone, but I am just going to add it very softly to a few spots. And I'm also feeling to, that I need to add a little bit of red. I often add red. Um, let's go crackling campfire, just a little bit, like highlight exactly. I don't want too much of this, but I always think a little bit of red on anything. Yeah, ooh, yeah, that's good. Um, add some beauty. So I'm really doing soft touches. I really want to be clear here. I'm not pressing too hard. I hope you see that so that you're not just like, which could be cool, but not the effect that I'm going for. And I'm gonna bring this in kind of the corners, kind of highlighting the edge as well. And I think I'm gonna say I'm done. What am I gonna do with this? I don't know, part of me just loves it as it is and I think I might just keep it like this for a while. I'm gonna shoot it and put it on social media. Um, I am uh, gonna just enjoy the surface, then maybe one day I'll work over it. But for now, I just like it as it is, and I really do. Um, so I am going to turn the camera up. Hey. And reset here. Away from the window so that you can actually see me. And I'm gonna remind you, before I show it to you again, that this, video today was not only about a demo and not only about having some creative fun and maybe learning about some new products and techniques but it was also about um am i a fire sign i don't know what's a fire sign i don't know which months are fire sign um and i'm really i don't even know what a fire sign means so paul maybe you can either tell me now or message me and let me know um so this is not only about learning about this and getting all the grunge and i'll show it to you in a second i promise this is about supporting craftiness and ang Herod. So if you guys enjoyed this, um, this was offered to you free of charge, Taken, taking over craftiness page, please um, support her. So follow her on Facebook, follow her on Instagram. It's ang Herod. She's an amazing person. She, she has a great craft store outside of LA in the Valley, um, but find a product to buy. You know, if you have my dye sprays, but you didn't have gold mine, go and buy gold mine. If you've never used the paper artsy paints before, go and buy one color. I mean, buy six colors, but just, just get something. Support her. I want to be able to message her later and for her to say, thanks, Seth. We got some new customers. We got some sales. I don't want her to say, wow, that was great. We all had fun. I didn't sell a thing. So I'm asking you to support her. And while you're on her site, and I say this every time now I do these demos, remember that every store owner has a different vibe and has a different um, source. And so there's always, hey Amanda, there's always so much. Oh, Deborah, you wanna come by? I love it. Um, there's always so much to find that you may not find at another shop. So don't just click on the one link that was sent. Take a couple minutes after this, get a cup of coffee, get your iced tea, um, get your wine and sit down and go through her store and see if there's anything else. Um, and I know I will ask Ang Harry later, how'd you do? So I'm hoping she does okay. So let me show you what I got here. Um, uh, and what it looks like now. I'm gonna kind of tip it. I want you to see the texture. Now I wanna remind everybody if you came late that I put the texture paste on. I put three of them on. I, I mixed uh, in different layers, flaky, sandy, and beads. And I put it on really thinly because we needed it to dry. Imagine, oh, that's a good one. Imagine though, if you put it on really, really thick and didn't rush it. I'm doing great, Amanda. Hey, Carol. You can just see even with just a little bit, that little bit I put on, it is so textural. It's such a beautiful surface. And none of this stuff, glitter or otherwise, is gonna flake off. So as a reminder, we used Isink uh, Aladina Texture. We used my Paper Artsy um, paints. Oh, cool journal color. That might just have to happen, Judy. Thank you. I can imagine adding maybe um, like a, some found object metal um, 
kind of thingy here that might just have to happen. We use dye sprays and then we use my embossing powders from both WOW and um, Emerald Creek. And then we went back and we added the diamond. So we used a lot of different uh, products. Aries is a fire sign. There's three in each group of elements, astrological. Okay, I may need a, a full-on lesson on that. Um, and here it curates her items. Her store is like a jewel box wonderland. Oh my God, I love that. It is not the Home Depot craft store. It's a jewel box wonderland. That is awesome. All right, so I am thrilled to bits. I am going to get off this. I'm going to clean up. Oh, use it on beads. Thank you, Amanda. And that's a reminder of the people who came late that that uh, my diamond, my textures, and some of the stuff I didn't use today, they're all all surface. They work on anything. Um, a Spellbinder's die cut, for sure. All right, so I want to thank Ang Heron and Kendall for, for being here and allowing me to do this. I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. I am going to take some cool photos of this. Um, put it on um, my social media and I hope you guys played along and if you did um, oh a couple things uh, if you're interested in following me and you don't you, I'm new to you just go to sethapter.com it's my website and you can click around and learn more about me but if you go to my about page you will see links to my YouTube and my Instagram and my Pinterest I know I have a Pinterest most people don't know that because I don't use it much but I have one I have Facebook follow me on whatever you like to actually use the other thing is that um, I have a group on Facebook a lot of you guys are in it it's called Seth after creative community it's 5,500 people and it's a very active group not all 5,000 participate but lots of them do it's very active it's very supportive it's a loving group uh, it's a great group if you're new to mixed media if you're a mixed media maven um, you will get a lot of love and a lot of support so if you think about that, just go to Facebook and in the search bar uh, for groups put in um, Seth After Creative Community. And I hope to see you there. And when you have to answer a question to get in, which is just basically like, uh, why do you want to join? You know, put it, maybe put in that you found me through Angharad. So thank you guys. This is so cool. I'm so happy I had a chance to play. And you guys are a great audience. Um, if you happen to have done any of your own work, feel free to put it in the group or on your page and just tag me. All right, be well, take care, and everybody stay safe. Let's keep um, the improvement that's happening in our world, um, some parts of our world. Let's keep it going. All right, be well, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.